the listed species, some real quick slides. This is a slide of Winter Run uh, Chinook salmon escapement from 1970 to uh, 2010, and also Spring Run. All you need to see is the obvious stuff. They used to be relatively abundant. They collapsed. They stayed very low. They got listed, made a couple of increases in uh, around the year 2000, but have dropped off very substantially. So we're talking Winter Run these days, uh, somewhere around maybe 2,000 fish. I don't have the data table and spring run something more like 1,000 fish. And you're going to see we're going to contrast that with maybe there are 600,000 adult striped bass now. This uh, time series again, same idea uh, from the previous slide. This series starts in 1967 and goes to 2010. Delta smelt on the top, lump and smelt on the bottom. The upshot is they used to be abundant, used to be the most abundant fish in the estuary with regards to delta smelt. Uh, they collapsed uh, in, in the 1980s. They were listed in the 90s, took a little, uh, had a little increase in abundance, <coughs> collapsed again around the year 2000, uh, along with longfin smelt, young striped bass, and threadfin shad. That's the pelagic organism decline. Uh, just in a very simple sense, the pelagic organism decline ramped everything up. Everybody's concerned about the listed fish right now. So again, these fish have collapsed. Striped bass are also declining. This is an uh, index of abundance of first year fish, so baby striped bass. Back in the day, they were super abundant. Uh, they collapsed, uh, became an object of management concern. There were huge restoration efforts in the, in the 70s. That resulted in uh, some uh, different fishing regulations, but mostly it resulted in the stocking program. That plus uh, environmental conditions resulted in an increase in the production of uh, young fish, but then it tapered off and it has been very low values. So this is young fish. Uh, this, these two panels, the top panel is from party boats, uh, and the bottom panel is from the market capture study. These are trends in abundance. So if you see the numbers getting, the, the bar is getting tall, that means abundance was, in, was increasing. And what I want you to see, generally speaking, is that we're seeing what you're seeing. When, this, when we think the striped bass abundance is high from our scientific data, you guys are seeing that you catch them fast. Um, the important thing is the bottom slide, from, from my perspective, uh, there, there were 150, uh, sorry, 1,500,000 roughly adult striped bass back in the day in 1969. They dropped off to about 500,000 by about 94, and then through management actions, particularly stocking, but also just things happen. Uh, they, they increased in abundance in, to uh, a peak of, a, of almost one and a half million in the year 2000. Now they've subsequently dropped off. Those last several bars, uh, those estimates are preliminary. They will change. They're preliminary because uh, Governor Schwarzenegger cut our staff. Okay, so, so what we have are the listed fish. They're in the tank. Striped bass, babies aren't being produced, but there's still a lot of adult striped bass. There are a lot of adult striped bass because they're resilient. They live a long time. They can go out to the ocean to feed, uh, all that kind of stuff. Now, now is where we start to get to the, the fancy work. This is the results of bioenergetics. Uh, this, is the, this is the millions of kilograms of fish consumed <coughs> by striped bass at various levels of, un, of abundance. So this is, this is important. So what this says is that down here, when you have... Uh, a small number of adult striped bass, they're eating 10 million kilograms of fish. And then as the abundance of striped bass increases up to here, they're eating 30 million kilograms of fish. So a kilogram is about, call it two pounds. So these are adults. Adults are eating like 60 million kilograms of fish, uh, uh, sorry, pounds of fish a year. It also turns out that juveniles, because they're super abundant and they're growing very fast, they generally eat about the same amount of fish as the adults do. This again is just a time series of, of that other plot. So back in the day when there were a lot of striped bass, they ate on the order of, the adults ate on the order of 30 million kilograms a year. It declined, uh, their, their consumption declined along with their abundance to the mid 90s when they were at the lowest level. Then when they peaked, they were growing very fast and they were quite abundant. And right around the start of the pelagic organism decline, 
they were at their highest levels of food consumption uh, almost during the entire time series. Okay, so sparse listed fish, uh, lots of adult striped bass still, even though adult striped bass have declined. We see adult striped bass and juveniles eat a lot of food in order to be as, as abundant and as fast growing as they are. Now the question is, what do they eat? And we have decades and decades and decades of food habit studies. And what they show is back in the day, when, the, when what are now listed fish were common, you found them in the guts of striped bass routinely. And so this is a, this is a very simple chart. Uh, the red bars are longfin smelt, pies I should say, longfin smelt, green is Chinook salmon, blue is delta smelt. This is uh, from a study that was published in 1967 <coughs> in the summer. What you see is occasionally, indeed, striped bass eat a lot of Chinook. And occasionally, indeed, they eat a lot of delta smelt. Here's another season. This is spring. Again, they're eating a lot of delta smelt, uh, uh, fair numbers of delta smelt, and a lot of Chinook salmon. Winter, they're eating longfin smelt. But we didn't find any other what are now listed fish in their guts. Again, you know, sometimes you find them, sometimes you don't. Same thing. Sometimes you find them, sometimes you don't. Uh, one of the reasons you don't find them in the guts these days very often is because they're so rare. Listed fish are a needle in a haystack of striped bass now. There's 600,000 uh, adult striped bass and there's minuscule numbers of listed fish. Plus striped bass digest their food very, very quickly. So the odds of you finding a delta smelt within about six hours of when that striped bass ate it uh, is very remote, so it's not surprising that you, you guys don't see it. We don't even see it very often, but that's no reason to believe it's not happening. <laughs> yeah, really, really. Okay, so now the question is, our, our supposition is that striped bass eat a lot of listed fish, and we think that it would be good if anglers kept more of the fish they catch. So what we have here are, are some data about the fishery. The top panel is harvest rate. What it says is that back in the day, anglers took about 20 to 25 percent of the total population of adult striped bass. It fluctuated through nobody's uh, management plan, just sometimes you guys took a lot of fish and sometimes you didn't. Uh, these days, down around 10 percent. So, so anglers these days are taking about 10 percent of all the adult striped bass on an annual basis. Uh, down on the bottom is a little bit of algebra, uh, you take the abundance estimate and the, and the harvest rate estimate and you figure out how many striped bass anglers are actually keeping. And so, so anglers have over time kept as many as 400,000 striped bass a year. These days, it's more like nearly 100,000 striped bass. Okay, so this is party boat data. Uh, this is the longest time series that we have, continuous time series, so I'm showing that. Uh, what we have are the number of fish kept from party boats inside the San Francisco estuary from 1980 to, the, to, to 2000. And the number of fish kept fluctuates wildly. It, 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 statistically speaking, it fluctuates with the abundance of striped bass. Anglers tend to go fishing more when they're going to be able to catch more striped bass, and keepers in particular. The bottom panel uh, is the number of striped bass released from party boats. That data, uh, party boat skippers only started including that in the mid in the mid 90s, and what we see is that uh, party boats have released up to 5,000, but these days more like a thousand fish a year. So, we're saying if if you guys keep more of these fish, they're going to eat less of the listed species, and that's going to be a good thing for the listed species. Uh, there is uncertainty. Uh, you, you notice I, I haven't said here how many delta smelt are eaten by striped bass these days or how many Chinook salmon. We don't know, but we know what the trajectories are and we're concerned about them. So there would be uh, extra monitoring, extra reporting, and an adaptive management framework where if we see that, for example, anglers are catching way more striped bass than we imagine, say they're, say they're keeping 50%. Of the adult striped bass every year, we would we would go to you guys and we would go to the commission. And we would say, well, this is not exactly what we figured. Shall we have a discussion about maybe reducing the bag limit or increasing the minimum size limit? Just a second. Uh, there's some other uncertainty, and that would be, say, you guys did take more striped bass, might that disturb the ecosystem? Maybe striped bass are suppressing largemouth bass, and if there are less large uh, striped bass 
there would be more largemouth bass. 